life on the line, that's committing suicide. That's like a suicide bomber. You dealing with people that really got beef with you, that really hurt one of my friends that's not here in the world, and then you motherfucking niggas want to make diss songs about these niggas, and you think it's a fucking joke, and you don't get busy. That makes me think that you crazy. You don't make a diss song about niggas Same here. your friends. You go get busy, and then you make the diss song. <laughs> then you make the diss song. You go get busy, then you make the diss song. Let's talk about it. So cool. After after that, I'm minding my business six months down the line. You hear me? You hear me, Relly? Yo, Relly, you hear yeah, me? Yeah, I hear you say that. Yo, make sure you hear me because I'm talking. I hear you. Talking to you. I'm not talking. I don't, I'm not reading the comments. I hear you, cuz. So cool. Nigga, I'm listening right to every after, word. All right, cool. All right, cool. cool. I listen, cuz. So right after that, six, seven months down the line, I'm minding my business. After I done slapped the shit out of sport, Cheesy Mula calls me. I'm like, hi. He like, yo, Tom Mac. Why well, me and you always fall off on the wrong side, bro? Why well, me and you always bumping heads? I know you're a leader. I'm a leader too, bro. I know you're my man, bro. You know what, Tom Mac? I'm going to push everything aside, bro, because I know who you is, and I know you really like that. You want to see Jeezy Moolah say Tom Mac is a menace of the streets? You didn't see on Jeezy Moolah page when he said he slapped me a Wooski is crazy? You didn't see Jeezy Moolah admit it and said Tom Mac is really the menace of the streets? I am. You didn't see Scrap? 1090 said, oh, my God, Jeezy Moolah, you just lost your savage. You're done. You lost the savage of all savages. You lost the gangsta of all gangsters. I don't know nobody. Tom Mack knocks down 30 niggas in a row. He could be brolic, big, small, little. Play with this shit, call that. I could do it like that. I snap. So let's get back to Jeezy Moolah. He calls me six, seven months later down the line after I done slapped up his friend, Real Rice Sport, to be my friend again. And while we sitting on the phone, I've been telling Moolah, like, yo, everybody keep on telling me I should do a podcast, Moolah. Or I should do YouTube, Jeezy Moolah. Or I should just probably, or I should just probably um, be a rapper. But Todd Mars, I'm not going to lie. Tom Mars really got that thing in him that that rapper that rapper problem like you know niggas want to be a rapper they don't want nobody else around them to rap first because they got to take off first but it's that rapper mentality like rappers have that like when you become a rapper you just don't want nobody else around you rapping and trying to just go up before you so Tom Mars I used to always go to the studio with Tom Mars watching rap and stuff and I used to always say Tom Mars let me rap bro I could do it and Tom wants to be like, chill, I got this. It's me and fam turn. You're going to get your time. Like, wait till we go up and we blow, and then we're going to put you right in the mix. I respected that. I listened to my friend. I said, okay, Tom wants you and fam keep on rapping. Kill again. I'll wait my turn. Whenever y'all blow up, you know what happened? Nobody's blowing up. Fame went about his way, signed good deals, got his life together, making great music and doing his thing. Tom Mars is back where he's at doing his thing. Nobody's from the real rights is real rappers. Nobody's making this rap shit go up. Kanasi do not have no nice real rappers. They all still in pop smoke voice swag style is getting boring. I said there's nothing else for me to do, Jeezy. What are we gonna do to save our own community? What are we gonna do to show the world that I am the best person and I'm the best nigga from Kanasi? You know what Jeezy Mula said? You're a rapper. Do what you do today. And the first thing I said is to Jeezy Mula, every op that I catch, you know I bun that. And you know that I do this for fun, Scrap. I walk down on him, get shot. He don't want that. Right I there. I got gangsters with me. They ain't all black. And right there. I'm going to pop up, change. make a movie. I can't wait till I catch me a Suvi. Called Creasy. He thought he was Gucci. You know me? I had to slap me a Wooski. You know me? I had to slap me a Wooski. I didn't so cool. back. Call me say that. So cool. Listen Black to that. Big Wu all that. Yeah. I just want his nose in the Maybach. So listen, so listen to this gangster shit right after that, right after that, and right after all this shit happened, and right after all this shit was going in prospect, and then all this shit was really like going to this part about, you know what I'm saying, when I really became a rapper, Moolah wanted to see how fast I could do it. He didn't believe in me. He said, Todd Mac, nobody could be a rapper. I started being a rapper on July 2nd. I dropped the video and made the song and did the song in the studio and did the video and the song in the video dropped July 7th. Jeezy Moolah said, no man could do that. I said, I could. I could do whatever I want. I said, I'm going to do the song tonight. Trophy's going to get me the studio time tomorrow. We ran to the studio time the next two days. I dropped the track the same day. 
I laid it down one take, one time, a couple of punchings and a couple of punch outs. I did the fucking video in the trenches of the motherfucking projects in the middle of a basketball court with a big fucking R in the middle of the fucking floor. I flexed up in the biggest of Mary sweatsuit that you could find with the shorts and the hoodie to match. I put these wild motherfucking little kids in and they was the most sturdiest kids you ever seen in your motherfucking <laughs> life. Them kids was so fucking sturdy. Jeezy Mola, you took that video down, you disrespected the kids. That's what I'm trying to show you. The kid came to me in the projects the next day and said, thank you, bro. Why oh, did that Jeezy Mola wrote the away? Jeezy Mola wrote some of the away. He did. Because I don't know nothing about Storm Blicky. I don't know nothing about them other niggas that's getting cut in jail. I don't know nothing about them. So he did give me a little balls to spit inside of DOA. I'm not going to lie. Why would I Nah, lie? you a real nigga. You a real nigga for that. I'm never going to lie. I don't know certain balls in this shit to even say that. I don't know nothing about Dusty Locaine. I, didn't, I was never supposed to say that about On Point OP. I was never supposed to say that. Oh, On Point like OP? Yeah, I was never supposed to say those balls about OP. I'm not going to lie. The only reason I did it because OP That's the used to, big 1090 wave. Yes. Only reason I did it because OP used to say slick shit about me on Instagram. And he used to back me up still, but he used to say slick shit. But me and OP used to have our own personal question. You remember OP came on the live the other day? Remember? Oh, yeah. OP came on the live the other day. Yeah. And remember when I started getting mad, I said, OP really sit up here and tell y'all niggas how much money I made and how much money I really got. And he just ran off the live right after that, right? Yeah. Yeah, because he's really going to know. He don't lie. One thing OP don't do is lie. He's real for that. OP, do not lie. He would never lie. I don't care what you saying to OP. That's why he's a real nigga. OP, don't lie. So when I diss OP in that track, who you think wrote them bars for me? Yo, Fleur, I'm not talking to you until you bring me some weight, bro. That's worth my dead mans. You heard me? You heard me, though? You heard me, though? Really? OP? Yeah, I I can't never say that about OP. So, Jeezy Moolah did wrote that for OP. I wouldn't know how to say that about OP. I would never even understand how to say that about OP. It's not in my heart to make up those bars about OP. But it made sense. You know, Jeezy Moolah wrote those bars. Let's get back to Core Creasy. He thought he was Gucci. The hardest bar you always going to forget. And I lift him right in front of his mother. Who talks like that? You got to understand the bars when you hear it. You, go, you know how I really talk. Nobody else can talk like me. So yes, he helped write the song. Yes, he gave me the beat. Yes, I did it under real right. Yes, he has the right to take down the video. Yes, he lost millions of dollars. Yes, he slowed down my process of being the best drill rapper. But no. Really, I gave the world Duppy. Then yeah. I knew I was good. Who wrote Duppy for you? Nobody. Nobody. Nobody helped me. Oh, you thought that was it? Then I gave him the lifters slash James Harden. Who wrote that for you? Nobody. Nobody, Nobody even helped me. You better step I, back. Two step back, James Harden. So that's what let me know who I really am, and they just made a beast and a monster. You think that's the only songs I got? I got a song called Cold 33 that's going to shake the whole world. I got a call right after Cold 33. It's called Mr. MP himself. The world is going to scream when they see Mr. MP himself. Then I got a, call, and then I got a song called Flexing Up. Oh my God, Jesus Christ, somebody stop me when I say flexing up. Do you know it's the videos that's saving them? I can't find it right. I want the video that goes in the air. The cameraman fly the video around and get the whole area and shit like that. I want to be super tack. That video costs $2,300. The outfit costs $2,000. So that one video cost five thousand dollars. I already paid for everything. Only thing I'm waiting for is the leather pants to come right now from my man. My man is making the leather pants, and I'm bringing back some 1980 shit on these niggas. And I'm pop and I'm popping out with black Tim's. I'm gonna show you the drip. And I'm popping out with that lifter hoodie, and with some savages and some little kids that still gonna get sturdy. I'll be right back, Tom. I go on. Do your thing. I've been doing this. So cool. Let me get back to what I'm telling you about this butt-ass nigga, Sport Plus. He's pussy. He's always going to be pussy. He committed suicide. He disrespect the wrong niggas at the wrong time for the wrong niggas that don't get busy. All right, cool. Then we get back to making it make sense that y'all can't play with TM no more. Then we get back to the whole simple fact that TM is really your cousin, Jeezy Moolah. Why would you want to hurt your own cousin? For friends and a gang and blood? 
Nobody's going to respect you after today, Jeezy Moolah, because I don't know no people that's going to hurt their own family and friends for a gang. Or even just mad because their cousin is as realer than them. I don't know niggas that does that, Jeezy Moolah. So cool, we kill you fast. Now what makes it more bad, Jeezy Moolah, why you got them Rose Hefe and Ben Lit niggas posting you? Them niggas is pussy. <laughs> like, what you think? Somebody's really jacking them in the streets, bro. You don't know the gangsters then, Moolah. That's why I know y'all niggas don't hang outside. That's why I know y'all niggas don't really come outside. Y'all not in these clubs and y'all not really outside in these strip clubs and shit. Only Big B's is the only one that's going outside that sleaze. And the only reason Big B's go outside because he's a little Brooklyn. It's a Brooklyn that he got in him. Let's talk about it. He ain't do nobody nothing, so nobody's supposed to do him something. But last time I checked, I heard his big bees and them niggas that put a bag on Jeezy Moolah and had some sleaze nigga walk inside the cell and punch out Jeezy Moolah. And Jeezy Moolah had a big fight and ends up in the box and calls Todd Mack right after that and say, yo, Todd Mack, big bees put a bag on me, bro. Had some sleaze nigga pull up in my cell, bro. We had to get it, bro. I really want to come home and be a rapper, bro. I really want to buy you that Rolex you love, Todd Mack. Don't you love that Prezi Rolex? I say, yeah, Mula, I love that bust down Prezi Rolex. That's my dream watch. And diamonds got to be from Rolex. He said, yo, bro, I'm going to get you that watch, bro. But Big B's and them niggas just punched me out in the fucking cell, bro. He made some nigga walk in. I knew him too, bro. He said he don't even want to do this, bro. He said he didn't even want to fight me, bro. He said he didn't want to do this, but I'm a deal right now, bro. And he said, yo, he got to fight me. So me and him just got it. And now I'm in the box, Tom Mac. And I can't come out the box. And I can't come home to be a rapper. The sleaze is beating on me in jail, Tom Mac. What are you going to do about that? You always saying you could do something. You always saying you the big blood. I did something. Big B's and them niggas ain't never sent a nigga back in your cell again. You ain't notice that? You didn't notice that Big B's and them ain't sent no cell in your cell again. I made the one phone call. I called Big B's. I said, hello, Big B's. It's me, Tom Mac Billy. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, when Casanova was in, in, in Miami, right? And Casanova was on stage performing. And um, Meek Mills and them niggas or whoever was supposed to bring you out in Miami on the stage, right? And Casanova told them niggas, don't bring you out on the stage because all the niggas in the crowd is twirlers and they waiting for you to come on the stage and they probably shoot down the whole fucking stage. And Casanova told them that. You call me. Ask Casanova. He calls me. Yo, time man. Casting over, bro. He stopped my shine. I was supposed to go on the stage when I first came home and blow up. Casanova told niggas if I go on the stage, they're going to shoot down the whole stage, bro. How you let Casanova do that to me? Tom Mac, what's going on? How you let Casanova do that to me? What you think I did for Jeezy Moolah? Bring. Yo, Casanova. What the fuck happened, bro? Why I'm hearing that you told niggas that my man can't go on a fucking stage and make a show so I could be rich and get out this fucking projects? You want to see the projects I'm in? The nigga Casanova said, no, Tom Mac. It was Rick Ross and them. And Rick Ross and them niggas, I had to tell him that. Because I know what's really going to happen and you know what's really going to happen. You know these niggas is not like that. I'm telling you, the niggas in the crowd, they telling me they like that. And I believed them because they was a the twirlers. So I understood them, but I told them, you should have let them try that first. Because I don't think they would blow corn on the stage if Rick Ross is there. So I'm talking to Casanova. I'm asking Casanova as a man. I'm saying, Casanova, would you ever do that again? He said, no. I said, you going to mind your business next time, right? He said, yes. Go ask him. I said, Casanova, the things that I do is very different. Go call him. For Jeezy Moolah, I did that. I call Savages. Do you know that Casanova is from my hood of Flatbush? He's really a gangster. Do you know that Casanova is really a Flatbush native friend of mine that I have to respect because he's from my community and born and raised and he's really lit and he's really the man? Do you know the respect that I got to give Casanova? But no, for GZ Mula, I got to break all ties because you're stopping the money process. And that's what I did. Call Cass. There's no man I'm fair. God is my witness. God, you kill me in my sleep. And God, you punish me every day when I see a man and I don't know what to do. Tom Mac Billy, God, you gave him the power to run. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Tom Mac Billy, God, you gave me the power to jump, Jesus Christ. I love that you gave me the power to still jump. But I would never knew that you would give me the power by all angels above me to fly.
I never knew I could fucking fly until I make them fucking moves. And when I jump over that fucking car, I was in the fucking air, nigga. I didn't know I could do it, God. But God gave me the power to run, jump, and I could fucking fly, nigga. Yeah. So bring that nigga to Tom Mac and show me what he could do with me. Because I don't believe no nigga could fuck with me, bro. I move digi. I move so tactical. What you know about Tom Mac Billy's really 6'2, 275 pounds, and he really knocks niggas out too. I don't know a nigga that could walk up on me and bend me up. Where? Mike Tyson can't bend me up. Cause Mike Tyson ain't know I had a knife. And when Mike Tyson doing all them punches and this knife start hitting his gut, Mike Tyson know he lost. Cause he came to a fucking knife fight with a fist. Yeah, nigga, I play the win. Mike Tyson can't beat me up. Who could beat me up? Yeah, so when Jeezy Mulo was in Miami, he supposed to go on stage with Rick Ross and him. And Casanova told him he can't go on stage because they're going to boom down the whole stage. I called Casanova behind that. I spoke to him like a gangster. asked him. There's nobody I ain't talked to as a gangster. I asked him. You know I give locations. You know I go live when I'm outside in the clubs and I give you the location you need to come. You know that every op, all them twin niggas, you ran them niggas down for all years all over the world. They went to Atlanta. I went to Atlanta. Scoomed them out of Atlanta. They went to all the clubs in Manhattan until one day he started that we was in a club in Manhattan and we couldn't take it. We just stood outside in front of the door. Everybody just stood there in front of the door. He probably saw us in front of the door and ran around and the only thing we know, the whole cops was there. Every police was there. They locked off the block in the city. You think we left? We still didn't leave, bro. I love you, Tom Mars. I don't know what type of people y'all niggas think y'all playing with, bro. When we catch them, they bless you, know. I ain't gonna lie, them twin niggas got some voodoo on them. They really twins. I said that shit to myself the other day, bro. And even the J. Rose, they got voodoo over there, bro. They practicing, yo, they paying some Obia priests, bro. Because God is my witness, bro. I don't know niggas that could dodge these type of shit that I'm putting on to these niggas. And these niggas stay getting away, bro. I don't know what else to say, bro. They don't hunt me down. Nobody blowing on me. Let's talk about it. I'm hunting these niggas down. And they keep on getting away. I'm running these niggas down. And they keep on getting away, bro. They know how to run. I don't know how you know how to run for me, and I'm practiced to chase niggas down and catch them. I'm from Canarsie. I'm practiced that. Scrap taught me. Scrap taught me everything. I was taught these things, bro. I had friends and family that taught me how to do these things. Jesus Christ, bro. I really got friends and family that taught me how to do these things, bro. I'm not going to lie, man. This is Sideshow I Bet TV. But it's like, you got to know what's really going on. It's different right now when you're talking to me. I don't want to expose niggas no more. Jeezy Mula's finished. Whoever respect Jeezy Mula for going to jail four times straight, that's your fault. I was waiting to see what you was about. I was waiting to see how you respect a man that keeps on going back and back and back and forth in jail and been in jail for the last nine, ten years of his life, and you really think that he's somebody special. I was waiting to catch you niggas in the comments. I was wondering what type of dick sucking is that? That a nigga's not even around and he's never in the streets and all you people's in the comments. I was wondering when y'all was going to stop. I was wondering why you think you know Jeezy Mula. I was wondering, what was his last hit song? Liddy? You know, shit getting Liddy. Go look at the date, bro. Did he try to come on and do a song with little TJ? How you leave the whole Canarsie to go do a song with Little TJ in the Bronx? Makes sense. Just like Rose Hefe and them niggas and Ben Litton and them niggas know that you left the sleaze and they throwing you up on their page and you the eight now. It makes sense. The sleaze should all love Rose Hefe and Ben Litt for that. Because last time I checked, all the big homie sleaze don't jack that. Pooch don't jack it. Big B's don't jack it. Nobody jacks it. So why would Ben, ben Lit post Jeezy Moolah on his page after what he did to the sleaze? It makes sense. 
You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? And that's it. What niggas are saying in my comments, what? Four blocks, Pappy. I'm following you right now, Savage. Following with my four blocks, niggas. She was going on these comments. This guy was like 30 something running with the streets, 23 year old niggas is under. If you know, you know. Don't worry about age and numbers, boy. I've been a little nigga running around with old niggas. That's what happens when you're really outside. J. Rose's pussy, true story. We the mob, true story. RWs, a lot of mercy. Flirto requested John since you since you chatting. I don't know Flirto. He can never come on my live. I don't know that nigga. Last time I checked, that nigga twirling. We don't jack that. You know what I'm saying? Wait, what? Mike Tyson can't beat me up. Yeah, that got it. Nobody can beat me up. Son is 8, 19, what? Cool. Nah, tell me somebody recorded that. Yeah, laugh my ass off. Yeah, yeah. Tom Mac hit like a Mac truck. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, a lot of mercy. Yeah, laugh my ass off. Yeah, I ain't crying. I ain't cool. Got past that. You know what I mean? Flirto's 